Is your NVIDIA RTX 3080 or 3090, if you have one that is, running a little bit too hot, especially those VRAM temperatures? Well, aside from changing your thermal pads, I put both in a loop and I did various tests in terms of water cooling. Let's see if these VRAM temperatures are better and if they're affected by the temperature in the water loop. So let's get started. <music> Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology. Some say every time you smash that like button, I'll probably try to throw another GPU in the same very loop and it's not to flex, I swear, it's about checking the temperatures. All right, so let's talk about the 3080 and 3090 specifically because these have GDDR6X, which does get considerably hotter than something in like a 3070, which isn't as fast of VRAM. Now, you're generally only gonna notice these very hot temperatures if you're using your GPU you, perhaps in a very intensive game for VRAM that's really going to have maybe ray tracing or something like that. Or, of course, if you're using your GPUs to mine, that's something that's going to really use up that VRAM and it's going to make it go very, very hot. So previously, I had the 3080 Founders Edition and that was getting pretty abysmal performance in terms of the VRAM temperatures. It would regularly hit around 110 degrees Celsius. Now, you can find this information, HWinfo64 that will tell you sort of what your VRAM temperature is. And just keep in mind, it's different from your core temperature. You could have a very cool core temperature of like 50 or 60 degrees Celsius, but a very hot VRAM temperature if you're doing something like mining or playing ray tracing intensive games. Now, that stock cooler, sometimes you can definitely improve the performance considerably by just changing around the stock thermal pads. Of course, you do have to open your GPU. So I figured instead of having to change my thermal pads, why don't I I just throw it in a water-cooled loop. I love doing water-cooled computers anyway, and that 3080 definitely needed it. It was really thermal throttling a pretty extreme amount, especially after it got heat soaked after a while. So I built this test system. Now, primarily at first, it's gonna have a 240 millimeter radiator on top. This is gonna be the very thin 20 millimeter radiator, and it has a Corsair a 240 millimeter radiator on the front. This one's gonna be a little bit thicker. So I threw the 3080 in there with the water cooled block and right away the temperatures definitely improved now this is going to be as a result of actually putting the thermal pads as well but the core with one gpu you can definitely run two 240 millimeter radiators the gpu core generally was staying in like the high 40s to maybe low 50 c which for a 3080 and just you know double radiators like that i thought was you know pretty fair now the vram temperature was no longer thermal throttling even after a very long time. It certainly did get a little bit hot still, maybe ticking over around 100 degrees Celsius or a little bit over, but certainly it stayed under that junction temperature of 110 degrees Celsius. So because of the thermal pads, as well as being under water, under a water block, it made the GPU considerably cooler. So then in the same case with these double radiators, I thought, what would happen if I throw a 3090 in there? Now, a 3090 is definitely going to generate a lot of heat. And of course, I wasn't expecting particularly great results. I just wanted to see at what point can you push these GPUs and if it affects the actual VRAM temperatures. We all know from water cooling that the GPU core temperature, of course, is affected by the amount of radiators that you have, your fans, even your pump. But VRAM temperatures, especially GDDR6X, that's a little bit newer. We're not as a custom to checking those temperatures, but certainly with these new GPUs, it's something that we definitely have to do. So I threw in the 3090 in the same loop. I didn't change any of the radiators around. And of course, the results really weren't that great. After really getting heat soaked, let's say I left it on overnight. And now this 3090 is actually the EVGA Hydro Copper. So the GPU came from EVGA with the water block with the thermal pads already. So this one I actually didn't modify at all. It was only the 3080 that I actually put the water block on. So having both in the same loop, now the temperatures did start to get a little bit out of control. Both of the GPUs were going a little bit above 60 degrees Celsius. That's it's still in the small loop with both of the radiators. Now that certainly got a little bit hotter than I was really comfortable with. And now the VRAM temperature on the 3090 hydro copper block, that one actually stayed pretty reasonable in the very low hundreds, sometimes 98 to like 
102 degrees Celsius, which is still perhaps a little high, but it's way under any uh, temperature that it's going to thermal throttle. So actually, even under these hot temperatures, the 3090 with the hydro copper block certainly did not thermal throttle at all, but the 3080 was certainly a different situation. I don't know if it's the water block or maybe the way that I had the thermal pads, but after it heated up, the 3080 certainly started to thermal throttle the performance pretty significantly, maybe like 30 to 40% less performance. In fact, it wasn't that much different than when it was the stock air cooler, and that's all due to the water temperature getting a lot hotter with that 3090 in there. The ambient temperature also went up a considerable amount, so the 3080 started to fall apart a little bit more, and you did get a considerable amount of thermal throttling. So, after seeing these results, and of course they were expected, I just wanted to see sort of the level that they would reach. I thought the only way to really remedy this problem is to add another radiator. Now, this case can take a 360 millimeter radiator on the front as opposed to the 240 that I have in there now, and it can certainly do a thicker 240 on top instead of the thin one that I have there now. I had built this with a different configuration in mind for the 20 series GPUs. So of course, if I wanted, I could just sort of upgrade the cooler inside the case itself. This is the main gear vibe. They sell them at Micro Center and Amazon. Actually a really great case for water cooling, especially with this Apex block that you can buy. It just makes it really easy to drain to work on your system and aesthetically I think it looks pretty awesome. And as you can see, I fit two pretty massive and power hungry GPUs in here. Of course, I am running the main gear 1200 watt power supply. It's a platinum power supply and it's more than enough to run these two GPUs. So having said that, I could have upgraded the case itself, put a 360 on the, on the front and the thicker 240 on top. But at first I thought, let me take it a little bit further and put a 360 millimeter radiator in addition to the two 240 that I already have in the case. Let me connect it to the loop on top. And I also wanted to test these new RGB fans. These are the gym RGB fans. And it's actually pretty cool for this purpose because it comes with a little controller that you can change your fan speeds as well as all of the RGB and everything everything like that. And of course, you could also connect it to your motherboard. It has the, the three pin, the digital RGB connector, so you can sync it up with your Asus motherboard or whatever you have. But the controller is really cool, especially on a test system like this, where I could use the controller to change fan speeds, as well as change all of the different colors. I kind of prefer keeping everything blue. I think that really makes the system look really cool because I do have the blue coolant in there. So that's just like a little aesthetic thing aside from the temperature testing. Of course, I don't like jumbling hardware in the system without at least making it look kind of cool. So anyway, I was really surprised by these fans. And of course, they did send them to me to use in the build. And one of the things that I really liked, it comes with its own little controller. And like I said, you could also plug it into your motherboard to control the RGB. And each fan has a single cable for both the RGB and the power. And everything is controlled by that single controller, making cable management and everything like that pretty straightforward. But anyway, they worked really nicely on top of this case because I really wanted that radiator not only to be visible, but to have a nice aesthetic element. So after adding the additional radiator, what were the results? And certainly they were pretty significant. At first, I wasn't sure if this would be maybe a little bit too much for the pump in that reservoir. But the water flow seems to be decent, don't have any problems with flow at all. Of course, if you're really putting together a system like this, maybe even a double DDC pump or even better, double D5 pumps. So now running the same tests on both GPUs, but with the additional radiator, produced a lot better results. First, the GPU core got considerably lower. Now it's pretty much staying in the low to mid 40s in terms of degrees Celsius. Generally, the room ambient will be somewhere between 23 to 26 degrees uh, Celsius. That's depending on how much heat soak and how much testing and for how long. Now, even after overnight where previously both GPUs went over 60 degrees Celsius and the 3080 was thermal throttling a considerable amount, Having added the extra 360 millimeter radiator, now the GPUs top off around the low 50s with both in the same loop. But the good news is the VRAM stays a lot better controlled. It's not overheating like it was before. It still goes a little bit over 100 degrees Celsius, but it's certainly staying further away from that 110 degrees Celsius T junction temperature. And that means that especially that 3080 is no longer thermal throttling, and you're pretty much getting now the full performance, even in sort of a heat soak 
built environment after the system's been tested for at least 24 hours running constantly you're pretty much getting 100 percent performance on both gpus and that's all thanks to adding that additional radiator so that goes to show you while vram temperature checking is something that seems to be more important now with the 3000 series gpus it's definitely still affected somehow by the water temperature by the general heat that's going on in the gpu so just keep that in mind when you're building a loop the cooler that you can keep the gpu core it's certainly going to affect your vram and your temperatures like that as well and with gddr6x especially that's something that's going to throttle performance if you're doing mining or if you're playing certain games with rtx and of course when it's water cooled you can keep your fans running at considerably lower speeds and you're going to get a lot better performance in general all right guys so let me know if you had any questions about this pretty crazy test everything that i crammed in the system remember to subscribe like the video and i'll see you guys on the next video